Hey everyone, it's Mary from SVG Cuts. I'm here with five brand new box card projects. Super excited that they're finally here and I hope you love them. I think they kind of have a summer feel to them, but they could also be adapted to other occasions. Maybe not so much the lemonade stand, it's kind of a strictly summer kind of theme, but as far as the other ones go, I think you could make them anytime. So I have actually three different colors of this off-road box card here. You just saw the yellow one. And in this video, in a few moments, um, well, actually near the end, I'll be making this red version of it, which is also really fun. And I had originally made this prototype, which you saw as a sneak peek maybe on Facebook, um, in this khaki color with the black rims. So super cool. I hope you have a blast making that and giving it to people who would love it. Um, also, I've got this really cute little rainbow card. I was thinking this would work well for a baby or a toddler baby shower card if it was pastel. It would be really cute. And um, however you want to adapt different things, it's always fun to see the different spins that you can put on it with your creativity. Or if you make it kind of very similar, it's always fun to see too. So we also have a cute little cactus box card. I have never done a design like this where it's dimensional in that way. So that was a lot of fun. I think I might try to do something using that strategy again in the future. It could be fun. And then finally we have some avocados. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of them myself. So is my sister. And if you know somebody who would enjoy getting a card with an avocado theme, then I've got you covered here. So it's a lot of fun to emboss and do some inking and everything. So I show you how those, um, all those pieces go together and what those steps are here in the rest of this video. So the paper, the patterned paper that I used this time is from American Crafts and it's a Dear Lizzie um, design collection, which is always so fun to see. I'm so glad to see that she's still designing paper, patterned papers. Love her style. It's always on trend yet um, unique and just always love it. You can't go wrong. So I had a lot of fun using that beautiful paper and I also had a lot of fun using these awesome stamps from Mama Elephant called the Congrats All Around Stamp Set. Um, really nice little sentiments. I pretty much, I don't know about you, but I personally, when I buy stamps, I only get the sentiments really because I don't, I don't really do too much with like the imagery of the other kind of stamps. But anyway, Mama Elephant has a lot of really nice sentiments. So very handy. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how each card goes together. So let's get started. For the avocado crate box card, I've got my pieces here. I did a little bit of gluing ahead of time, which you'll see in just a moment, but I've got the avocado skin here, and I embossed mine with this Cuddlebug embossing folder called Tiny Bubbles. If you're into embossing, maybe you already have it. If you don't already have it, there are some others that also would, uh, would work such as the dot matrix embossing folder by Sizzix is a Tim Holtz design. It's also very similar to this if you wanted to add some texture. Even if your texture doesn't really look like an avocado skin, I think just the fact that it is textured at all makes it look really cute. You could purposely not use something like that. You know, you could use like little hearts or little swirls. I think it would be just as cool. So I've got my label here, which I went ahead and stamped on using this stamp set from Mama Elephant called Congrats All Around. Super cute. Love it. And I've got my avocado pit here, the sticker, and some leaves. I've got my panels here. This bottom one is slightly taller than the top one, which you want to take note of which is which. I'll get into more detail about that. I've got my inserts, which are labeled 1, 2, and 3. Your machine will have cut a 1, 2, and a 3 into those shapes, and I went ahead and darkened it in with a pencil just for this video. I've got this piece, which is the front, and I folded it that way. And then I've got this piece, which I folded like this as well, and I glued my side panels right onto it already. And then I've got my envelope, which we'll put together at the end. So 
this is the back of your card and this longer or taller I should say one of these is slightly taller than the other one you can tell when you kind of line them up this one is the taller one that's going to go right onto the back I'll just go ahead and glue that on also and this is optional but a lot of times when it comes to my shapes I like to rub an ink pad around the edges of it especially when the edge has a lot of contrast like this since it's white and brown adding some ink really defines the edge but you do not have to do that if you want to make your project go together a little more quickly or if you're just not feeling it but if you are you can do that those ink pads are by Colorbox. They're called Cat's Eye Ink Pads. I have a lot of different colors of them. I've gotten them at Michael's, Amazon, scrapbook stores, you name it. There's probably lots of other inks out there that would work well also. So I will go ahead and glue this onto the back too. Right in the center there. And then I might as well glue this on and I'll make it match since I did this before. And glue that right onto the front, the front flap. We might as well go ahead and glue these together side to side. And I'll set that aside for now. So speaking of inking, I think it adds a lot of nice dimension on this pit. If you've got a shape that's supposed to be a round shape in real life, for example, this is really supposed to be a round spherical shape, then you would want, you would definitely want to add some ink if you have some, it makes it look more round. And the same goes for these avocado shapes. So just to talk about them a little bit, there are three like this that are a little bit smaller that are folded, have a fold line. Then there are two flat ones that are slightly larger and one plain one. So if you have some ink, it does add a nice touch to add that. I'm going to do this on top of here because the the ink pad has a tendency a tendency to kind of like shed its foam a little bit. I don't want to get that all over the place. So, if you want to, you can rub your ink pad around the edges including the center. Makes it look a little more avocado-y. I think my ink pad is running out of ink a little bit. Hopefully this one's not too dark. This one you can because it's going to be the edges will be hidden and then these are going to be sharply folded and they are all going in this direction on your card so if you want to skip inking the back side you could or if you skip the ink altogether that's totally fine it's still going to look really cool without the ink
if you take a look at the PDF menu document that came with your download, you can see the way that these parts are laid out. So on the front we've got that little slice with the, the leaf. We already did this part, the sides and the back. Then we've got insert one, insert two, insert three, and this is what insert three looks like from the back side. So you can refer to that at any time. There's also some more info here about the embossing folder and the shapes and everything. So this may or may not be relevant depending on which cutting machine and software you're using. Some of them get imported at that size automatically. Most of them do, I believe, but just in case you need to know, there you have it. Since I've got my ink out, I'm just gonna throw a random color on the edge of this one just to define it a little bit. You could add some ink to these if you want, whatever you wanna do. So what I'm gonna do now is, these three are identical, and as you saw in the PDF, one is gonna go on the front with a large leaf. I'm gonna put that on at the end so it's not in my way, but for now I'm just gonna kinda of lay it on there to remind myself that that's where that's going. Then for insert number one, these these two avocado shapes are the same, these two black ones. I'm gonna flip this over. One of these is gonna go here, and then my pit is gonna go in the middle, as well as one of these. Then for number two, we've got one more large leaf, as well as one guy like this. Then for insert number three, we've got it layered like this with a small leaf so it's going to be like this with this little sticker on it so we're going to assemble all of these and then we'll put the whole thing together and then do the envelope so you can do this however you want yours doesn't have to be just like this you can mix it up if you want you could put the crate together and then change the way that you put the avocados in there if you want to if you if that you know floats your boat or whatever by all means go for it I'm just gonna do mine the same way that I did the original one the way that it's shown in the PDF so I'll do that Next, I could glue this right here, but just to add some dimension, I'm going to use some of these dimensional adhesive dots. These are by Thermoweb. They're called 3D Zots. I like them quite a bit. I've gotten them in a lot of different places where craft supplies are sold. And I'm just going to carefully center this on here. And after I embossed the black shape, it kind of made it curve a little bit, which is even more avocado-tastic. So I'm gonna lay that down just like it shows in the PDF and orient this somewhere, like the little, little label. And then I'll just put this together more or less the way that it shows in that PDF. So I'm gonna get the glue in just the right spot there. If you had like a little tiny brown like button or bling or something that would kind of look cute in that hole there. So you can check on the back make sure your glue is not coming out and it looks just like in the PDF. So for number two I'm going to bend this leaf like I did before, put some glue here. And then I'll just put a little glue here. And then for piece number one, 
insert number one. I'm going to use some more of these fantastic guys. I have a leftover guy that I tore in half. Sometimes I tear these in half to make them fit in small spaces. Hopefully I didn't get my my zot in that hole there. And then this, it's kind of shaped like a, it's not a perfect circle. It's like a little more pointy up here. Not that it really matters, but actually for my first one, you know what I did was I doubled, I doubled that up. Let's see if I can tear that off. I doubled it up so it sticks out even more. I'm gonna get completely crazy and triple, triple it up. Oh, there's some dimension there. Super cute. So for number one here, this is, I had this going straight up, but I almost kind of wished I had tilted it a little bit. Either way, it's gonna be really cute. Whatever you wanna do is a-okay. So if, if you're familiar with my box card designs, a lot of times I have the insert goes up behind the shape to create more stability, but then you would lose how cute this card is from the back. So I wanted you to be able to see the designs from the back side of the card. So that's why we're just we're just carefully placing them and gluing them on there that way. So this guy is gonna go here, put some glue. Mine is angled a little differently than it shows in the picture, but I don't think you can really go wrong with a bunch of avocados. So next, technically what we're gonna be doing is basically, if you were to close this up right now, we would be, gluing those inserts inside. I think it might be a little easier instead to glue these in now. So what I'm gonna do is put some glue on the side tab here of insert number three, and I want it to go right here on the side. So here's the front, here's the side, and I'm gonna put this tab right here so that the back of the tab is flush with the fold and the top of the tab, that top corner of it, is flush with the top of the side so that it will fold flat. So you can see how it's like that and the little cutout lines up properly. Then I'll do the same thing with number two, except that's going right in the center there. Technically it's just barely creating a little border around that hole and it's flush with the top right here and parallel with the one behind it. Just like that. And then number one So I, for beginners with box cards, I feel like it's easier to understand when you put the, the outside together first and then you put the inserts in. It's kind of like the concept makes a lot of sense that way. However, actually putting these in place is a little easier when it's already, it, when it's still open like this. I hope that makes some sense, but if you follow along with me, you will be just fine. So just like that. So I just followed these little curve lines. I actually did not make mine line up as perfectly as it could. This should be actually meeting up, but we're gonna live with it. So I'll just do the same thing on the other side. 
with the opposite side of tabs on the other side of the box. So again, I want the back of that tab flush with the, the fold line behind it. It's a little hard to show this on camera, but I think you understand because it's the same as the other side. And then same with insert two here. So that's lined up just like it was on the other side. It's a little harder to see it. And then this one, that curve, that curve lines up right there, just like its other side. So you can do a little check, press it down. and then we can close up the card. So next we can put our front design on. You can put it wherever you think looks cute. I'm just gonna do it like so. It's a little, it's angled a little differently than it shows in the, the picture. So if you want to double check that You can, or if not, you can put it wherever you think it's cute. Adorable. So next, for the envelope, it comes off of your mat like this. I went ahead and folded it. All you wanna do is fold the sides over and the bottom up. Just like this. Looks like I folded mine a little kooky. And then you can carefully fold your card flat. and insert that there. Next for the cactus box card, as you can see in the PDF menu document that comes with your download, you've got the shapes laid out here. We've got the insert with some rocks on it. The exact rock placement is not important. Then I've got the front and the sides, how they look with the flaps folded down. There's three rocks glued on the inside. The inside of the back, and this light green layer here is sort of like a imaginary because this is what makes up that light green part with a flower on top. And then these are the parts of the cactus, and this is what the back looks like. So that's just there for reference in case it's helpful for you. You can see the rest of the shapes as usual in your PDF. And I've got my shapes here, which I went ahead and started gluing some parts together. This is how the card base comes off your mat. 
and I went ahead and folded these flaps over and folded it like this. And I went ahead and glued the back panel in place as well as the label, which I stamped on using the Congrats All Around stamp set by Mama Elephant. Super cute. I used that for all of these cards. And then I went ahead and glued these panels in place. One, two, three, they're identical. And I glued these flat panels on. One, two, three, they're also identical. Then I took the insert and I folded its flaps back like that. And I went ahead and glued all the rocks but three onto the insert. And then I've got those three rocks, three flowers, and then the parts of the cactus. And I laid them out just the way that they came off of my mat. I've also got my envelope up here. So for each of these, you want to fold, you want to crease them sharply. You can do that by hand or if you have some kind of tool similar to this or this. It's a bone folder. If you're not familiar with it, it's just a paper crafting tool that you can use to really crease something sharply, which in this case is going to be helpful. So if you don't have a bone folder, maybe you have a pen or some other kind of rigid object that you could use to really press those down, that would be helpful. But if not, it's not the end of the world. Everything's just going to fit together even better if you can make that crease really sharp. So next I'm going to glue these cactus parts together side to side just like this. So again, you can see in your PDF or you can keep them in the same order where they came off your mat. This is the order that they should be in, also shown up here. So as you can see, these two large, large parts are on the outside and then these will match up here and then there's this guy which matches up there. So let's go ahead and glue these together side to side. So you just want to line it up so it matches up as nicely as possible and then keep working your way around. So there we go, cute little cactus. Now this is going to get glued right onto the inside here, just like this. So I'm going to anchor one side down first.
and then the other side. And maybe give it a little extra time while you're pressing down for it to take hold. And then these are just folded in half. It's like this. I'm going to fold it this way and put some glue on the back side. And all three of these little flowers are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you glue first or where you glue it. And then I'm going to go ahead and close up the card with some glue on this tab. And if you want to kind of bend it, bend it forward a little bit without creasing it, so that it stands up straighter, you can. And then these, these three little rocks, I realize these are pretty tiny. I don't usually have shapes this small in my projects, but it's just too cute to have those little, little rocks on there. So I'm just gluing those on the inside Just randomly, they don't have to be exactly a certain way. Just like that. So now we can put our insert in. I'll put some glue on these tabs here, nice and easy. And you just want the back of the tabs flush with the back of the box and the top of the insert flush with the top of the card there. And then before it's completely dry, you can flatten it out and then flatten it out and press down and make sure it's going to lay flat. Just like that. So next for our envelope, it comes off your mat like this. I went ahead and folded my fold lines and we'll just put some glue down here on both side flaps. Fold this up. Make sure you're not gluing it closed with your glue comes out the edges on the inside and then to insert your card and carefully fold it flat like this and just carefully guide it inside just like that and then you can affix it closed. For the lemonade stand box card, 
As you can see, the PDF document shows some information up here, a picture of the finished project, as well as the way that these are laid out, the front sides and back, as well as the insert and the inside of the back. And then it shows the shapes and the size that you should have it at when you're cutting it out. Depending on the software and cutting machine that you're using, this may or may not be relevant, but just in case you need to know, it's there, as well as how to fold the envelope. So I've got my pieces here. I've got the bottom of the 25 cents. I've got the, the leaves and the lemon part here, the bottom and the top of the lemon that's going to be this, as well as the cute little pennants that are the little banner, the awning, the stripes that are going to go around the sides and the front, as well as the body of the card here, which I cut out. I went ahead and folded it like this. I folded these down and glued these flaps on, the flap panels onto the flaps, as well as this back frame and my stamped piece here. So I've also got my little bucket with some leaves and lemons. I'm going to add these three buttons at the end. And I went ahead and glued my lemonade onto my pitcher, as well as the lemonade into these glasses. And three of the glasses are slightly smaller than two of them. So I glued those together, respectively. And I've also got my insert with its little frame here. It's going to have this on it and a little brad for my lemon. I've also got my envelope, which I went ahead and folded, folded over on the four fold lines, and we'll glue that together at the end. So first, let's glue the awning onto this piece here. And before you start any project, if you want, you can rub some ink around the edges of your shape totally optional, but it's something that I like to do when I'm taking my time and making my card extra special and nice. I'll just take a color that kind of coordinates with it. My ink pad's getting a little low on its ink, but even still, if you can kind of see, it creates a nice little effect. And I pretty much like to do that on all of my shapes. If I have the time and the desire, for example, especially with something like this, since the border of it has some pretty high contrast between the white and the brown. I think it's a nice, an extra nice touch on something like that to take the, a darker color or even a lighter color and just kind of define that edge. If you want, you can. It's very nice. So I've been using these ink pads for a long time. These are by Colorbox, and they're Cat's Eye ink pads by Colorbox. There are some other choices out there that are probably just as good, but I'm not really that familiar with other ink. I would like to explore the world of other ink pads a little more, but I have not. So as you can see, I just glued my awning right onto this piece like this. And then I will put some glue on it. And glue that right into the center of this piece here. The nice even border around the bottom and the sides. And then I can glue my lemon on here, or my, my lemonade pitcher. So again, as you can see, it shows a little diagram here. If you're wondering where I glued that stuff, you can always check out your PDF. So I will glue these on as well as the two glasses that are a little bit larger.
Next, I can glue my 25 cents element together. And instead of just gluing each number right in the center of its orange corresponding piece, it's actually up in the top left corner with a very small border up here with a larger border around the bottom right corner. It's probably not the end of the world if you glue it right in the center, but the idea is that it's kind of dimensional that way. Maybe kind of retro looking. Just like that. And then I'll glue this right here. Something else that's a nice touch that I did on my original card was I used some glossy accents. This is by Ink Essentials by Ranger. I got this bottle probably about 10 years ago. And I just checked and I still see it on Amazon and whatnot. And it basically, you kind of dab it on and it sort of spreads on its own and it creates like a raised glossy effect. Makes it look like it's an enamel, enamel shape kind of and it just sort of stays at the edge of the paper of whatever it is that you're using. I don't know how well you can see it in this video, but maybe a little bit. So not necessary, but in case you're curious about that, if you noticed it in the photos, I don't know if you could really see it or not. But when you see it in person, it's a nice little touch. And if you don't have this stuff and you're not interested in getting it, totally cool. But it's a nice little spot to add a little something something if you wanted to add some glitter. That would be cool. And ideally I should have done this part at the very end so that I can let it dry. But you can do yours at the very end of your project if you would like. So, kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see that effect. Next I'm going to affix my bucket of lemons and my three glasses here.
So for these lemons in the bucket, you can arrange them however you would like. I did mine originally this way, and I'm going to glue them to the back except for this one leaf, which I glued to the bucket, and then I used a dimensional adhesive dot to add some dimension between those layers. You can do that if you'd like, or you can just glue it right on. I kind of bent these leaves in half. It's a cute little effect. So the dimensional adhesive dot that I mentioned is by Thermoweb, it's a Zot. I've gotten these before at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, scrapbook stores. Very, very sticky, very useful. Usually can't go wrong with dimension. So there you go. Just adds a nice little touch, makes it look more realistic. Next, I'm gonna glue my little stripes on. So as you can see, this one has a flat bottom. This one is slightly curved, slightly curved, and then completely curved, completely curved. So they're shaped a little differently. These are straight across. Just like this. So this is a nice time to use some ink if you want to. Not necessary. You could use whatever color you want. You could use brown. But I thought it was really cute and festive and cheerful to throw some yellow on there. You could even get a little crazy and add like a, a thin, firm line of a darker shade of what you've got, such as this orangey sunshine yellow. So these are going to go right in the center. And then to evenly space these, they are, I mean, technically they're evenly spaced. The, the width of each stripe has a space between the next one that's the same. So the spaces are identical to the stripes. So if you wanted to use the stripes to kind of use them as guidelines, you can. Or you can glue the center one as best you can right in the center and then center the others. So I'm just using that as a guideline to help me get this in the right spot.
Next I'll glue my lemon slices onto my circle here. And I glued one already. And you could work your way around the circle, but to make sure that it's nice and even, it might be easier to put the next one directly across from the first one. And then do your best to evenly space the others. So this is how the spacing looks. And that one's not perfect. Actually, this one's, this one's a little off. Mine's a little off, but you know what? It's gonna be cute. Anyways. Next, we can bend these leaves a little bit and then take a brad and we'll just set that aside for now. So a lot of times with box cards, I'll go ahead and close up the box shape and then I will put glue on these two sides and carefully insert it in the middle so that the back of the tab is flush with the back of the box and so that the top of the tab is flush with the top there. But you could do it that way if you're familiar with my box card designs. Or you can also glue this inside first. So the back of this tab is flush with the corner here and the top of it is flush with the top here I'll do the same on the other side just like this And once it's taken hold, you can make sure that it's going to fold flat. And then close up your card. And once again, just check and make sure it's going to fold flat. And then we can put our little pendants in place. So I'm going to feed some twine through. Tie that in a knot on the back side. And then, and then I would like it to hang down maybe about about that much so I'm gonna want my knot to be right about here so I I ended up kind of triple Triple knotting mine there. So next you can put your pennants on. 
with a dot of glue. And you can adjust the spacing and the angle of them after they're on if you want. I'll take my little lemon design and feed that through the hole there. If you want to add some yellow glitter to these yellow spots, you could. And then I'm going to put my three little cute buttons on the front. The ones I have here are a little larger, and I'm going to use these adhesive squares that I have by Glue Arts. They might, they're a little small. I have some larger ones that I can't seem to find. So maybe I'll double them up. Just tiny little sticky, sticky dots. I have this chipboard button in my stash that is adhesive already. So whatever you want to do, totally up to you and your creativity, what you want to do with yours, if you do the same thing or not. Super cute. So next we have our envelope which comes off your mat just like this and then I folded it already and these are the sides and this is the bottom this is the top although if you were to switch the top and the bottom it would not be the end of the world so you just want to affix the bottom to the sides make sure it's flat make sure you're not gluing it closed And then you can flatten your card just like this and carefully insert it into your envelope. Just like so. And then you can fix that. Next for the off-road box cart, I've got my pieces laid out here. I've got the uh, the rims here which I cut out of shiny silver. That's part of the tire. There are three tires. There's the bottom layer here, this rim part, and then the top layer. I went ahead and glued those together up here for the other two. And then I've got my three brads picked out that I'm going to use in the center of each tire. Then I've also got the colored pieces of my truck. The original one that I had had yellow parts and I'm going to do it right now in red just for fun. I also had done an original one in like khaki and for the rims I cut them out of black which I thought was kind of cool. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No cats right now. So that consists of these guys here. This one has these two little tabs folded up a little bit, and this one actually gets folded over like that. This one also gets folded, but I wanted to wait and show you exactly how I did that since it's slightly tricky because the fold line is so close to the edge of the cutout there, but just carefully and slowly crease it like this, and then 
you want to bend it the opposite way. Just like that. Then I've also got my license plate, which I glued already onto its backing. So there's a black layer underneath. And then there's my patterned paper, which is also mostly black, so it's hard to see, but there's two layers there for the license plate. Then I skipped cutting out the headlights. They're just included in case you want to use them. I'm just gonna put these on instead, make it easier and dimensional. I've got my two tail lights here, and I'm gonna put some little red bling on top of them also. Then I've got some various black parts here. I've got this one, this thing, these two fenders, the side mirror, the two inserts, which are the four seats, and then the back and sides of the card here. I went ahead and glued the black or the back panel, this patterned paper, I glued it right onto this. It can be any color patterned paper that you want it to be. And I went ahead and stamped on this label and glued that on as well. This stamp is from the Mama Elephant Congrats All Around stamp set. Super cute. Then I've also got this other insert here, which I went ahead and folded over, and you also want to fold it like that. And then finally, there's this part here, which has a, a tab on the side, as well as this little door, just like that. So I'm going to start by finishing up my tires. So to do that, I will put glue on this top layer, glue that right onto the rim. Oops. And then and then I will glue this onto that bottom layer. So my three tires are done. So as you can see in the PDF menu document that comes with your download, it shows the way that these parts are lined up. So for the front of the card, it's got the, uh, the color here, and we'll, we'll do all this together, but for reference at any time, you can check out this little diagram, the little fenders and the tires are on it. Here's where the, the front colored part goes on, as well as that black piece underneath it. You've already seen the back panel and the label. And then we've got the license plate, tail lights, another tire, and this colored part that's folded over. You can see inserts one and two, and then how insert three, which is in the front, is gonna go. I'm going to glue my door onto the front of my card here. But first, I want to put my little um, side mirror. So I'm going to fold that right in the center. There is a little tiny score line. But if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can just fold it in half, basically. And we're going to feed that right through this little slot. And put a very small dot of glue on it. Just like this. So there we go. Then I'm going to glue my door onto the front of my card. So if you have glue that escapes and it's visible, you can try to scrape it, or if you have a, a straight pin handy, I keep one nearby for times like this. If you want to touch it up a little before you let it dry, you can. 
Next, I'm going to glue this right onto the front. Then I'm going to take my two little fenders and glue those on. And if you want to avoid getting glue on the edge of this, it's going to be sticking out a little bit. As you can see, it's just ever so slightly sticking out. And you can just line the bottom of it up with the bottom of the red or whatever color yours is. So it's a little hard to see the black on black, but there you have it. Next I'm going to put some pieces on the front of this, and as you can see it's folded over like this, and then this piece is folded like that. So it's shaped like this. That's going to be creased. If you have a way to crease this even harder, such as a bone folder, or some other kind of tool. This is a bone folder. If you're not familiar with it, mine's got dried glue and gunk all over it, but you can use this or something like it to press down even harder on a crease if you really want it to be extra creased. So I'm gonna put a line of glue here and fold that over. So this creates a little lip that the hood sits in when your card is standing. Next I'm going to take this piece, which actually goes like this, and I'm going to glue it right here on the front. I'm sorry if it's hard to see black on black on camera, but you can always, if you ever need to take a better look at your the finished project, your download always does come with a photo of the finished project for reference, if that helps you. And then I'm going to put this piece right here and it lines up perfectly with the shape below it up here on the top. So your headlights will be going right here, but I'm going to wait until the end just so that it's not in my way in any way. I'm not sure if it would be, but next I'm going to take this folded over piece and glue it closed. And one of my tires, all three of the tires are the same, doesn't matter which one you grab. You could 
use a brad to close it if you wanted to, or I'm gonna use some dimensional dots to make it pop out. So I'm actually gonna wait until the end to put that on so it's not causing me any trouble. And I'm gonna be gluing this right here. So it's got a little bit of a, a border around the top. If you made it flush with the top, that wouldn't be the end of the world. But that's how I'm gonna glue it on. Then I'm going to put my license plate centered right below that handle, more or less is fine. As well as my two tail lights. Next, I'm going to prep my three inserts. So I'm going to take this one and this one, and I'm going to glue them together just using this area here, meaning just this part. So this part is completely free and not glued down, but this back part is glued down. So it's, it may be hard to see on camera, but there's a three that has been cut into the side of this for reference. And these have a one and a two. I went ahead and folded this like this. So that's number one. Number two is the, the exact same way. So first I'm just going to crease everything gently. And then I want the little headrests to be forward like this. It's going to be sitting like this, and then this goes completely all the way up like this. So again, and this one also goes up and down. So what I'm going to do is put some glue here and here and fold those up. And just hold it while it dries a little bit, and then you've got your two little, your two little seats. Now I've got insert number one here, in the back of my card. I'm gonna flip this over. And I'm going to be aiming for this little little uh, area here. And then on insert number one, on this tab, I'm going to be putting glue. I'm going to be putting glue on the side tab here. And then it's going to line up this little cutout here 
is going to be right at the top of this little area. So I'm sorry for the black on black here, but I'm lining both of those up. And I also want the back of the tab here to be perpendicular with this this fold line. They don't meet up, but I want them to be the same. If it's like this, or if it's like this, it's gonna be crooked. You want it to be perfectly level, and you want that shape, like I said, to line up with the other one. And also, this little small cutout here, this little cutout, if you've got it positioned right, that will also line up with the cutouts in the tire. So, maybe hard to see on camera, but I'm hoping that I went into enough detail so that you get what I'm saying. So again, insert number one here, side tab, lining up these two little cutout areas. Just like this. Next, for insert number two, I'm gonna be putting glue on this tab. And as you can see, there's a cutout here. This cutout here, which is gonna line up with the very corner top of this here. And again, you want this fold to be perpendicular to the other fold. And it's gonna go just like this. As you can see, not lined up, lined up, not lined up, lined up, right there. So, just like I did before. Line that up just right, and the bottom of the insert there is actually flushed with the bottom of the truck as well, right there. Next for insert number three here, we actually want its tabs to go the other way. So it's folded like this. And then this is going to line up right down here. So I'll be putting glue on this tab. I'm going to be putting glue on this tab here. And it's going to be going right here in this little this little shape here is the same as this little shape here. So that's where you want to line it up right there. I've got this piece that we've been working on and I'm going to take this piece and we're going to be gluing them together right here. So I will put some glue on this tab. And 
and glue them together. So next we're going to glue these tabs the same way that we did on the other side. So I'm going to start with this one in the back here. And once again it's lined up at the bottom with this little shape there just like it was on the other side. Then I'm going to put some glue on the tab of the other insert here, the next one. So it looks kind of crazy when everything's coming together, but You, uh, you got this. So again, it's going to be lined up with this, this little cutout here on the other side, which is this one. This shape is going to be lined up with this. So as you can see, there it is back there. I just want to line it up really nicely. And I'm going to fold the seats down and just give it a test and make sure that it's folding flat. It is. So we're getting there. I'm just going to put some glue on this tab. And again, this little bottom area of the tab is going to be lining up with this little bottom area of the truck. So just like that. Just like that right there. Just like the other side. Nice and parallel. And give it a check. And there we go. So I'm going to close up my card with some glue on this tab. And glue it right there so you can see where it is lined up. Corner to corner. Right there. So you can tuck this down a little more and then pop it back, let it rest on its side there. And mine seems to be a little, a little kooky. Maybe I need to press it flat both ways to make it lay down nicely. This front. I'm going to bend it both ways carefully. Maybe it just needed a little push in the right direction. Yeah, that's good. Just like this. You can pop those seats up more. Super cute. So, I am going to bend this a little bit out because I like it when it's Oh, it's so cute. Next, I'm going to take this piece and bend it here and here, just like that. And this is going to go inside, just like this. Kind of looks like a somewhat of a roll bar. It might not be in the exactly correct location, but Without it, it doesn't look as accurate. So 
So I'm just going to glue that right inside, lining it up. All those, all those edges should line up properly. And then I'll just carefully pull this out to put some glue on it. Just like that. And then put it right inside, just like that. So there we go. Now I can put my tires on. So I seem to have run out of black brads, silver brads, red brads. I need to do some bread shopping. So I'm actually going to use these red hearts. If you're using sticky things or something different, this won't really apply to you as much. I'm going to need to make sure that my hearts are going straight up and down. So I'm going to align this. So this is up and down here. You're probably using something that does not have an orientation like that. But at this point you can put your brad, your brads in your tires if you're doing that. And then you could certainly just glue them right on there. But I'm going to use a some adhesive, um, dimensional adhesives. So I'm going to do that next once I get these opened up. Close enough, even if they're not perfectly straight up and down. And then the back, the back one has the top centered that way. So just like that. If you have some other favorite dimensional adhesive, feel free to use it if you want. I'm going to be using these, but I'm going to tear them into small sections. And on my original truck, I only put, I think, two, maybe not even. And my tires on my yellow, on my yellow Jeep, my tires keep um, kind of like going, going crooked a little bit. Certainly not the end of the world, but I made a mental note next time to use more adhesive. So I'm going to be tearing these apart, putting them on the back of the tires where you can't see them from the other side, and then affixing them to my project. So for if you're doing what I'm doing here, you just want to put your adhesive on the bottom area of your tire because the top of it will be sticking up above your project a little bit like so. But then for the sides, I'm going to put some dimensional adhesive and put those on. And if you're curious, these this dimensional adhesive is 3D Zots by ThermalWeb. I use them quite a bit. You can find them where craft supplies are sold, such as Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, scrapbook.com, cherryontop.com. They're fantastic.
So there we go, super cute. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on for the finishing touch. These are just some bling that I picked up a long time ago at, I believe, at Michael's. They no longer are labeled, but they've been with me for a long time. So there we go, super cute. The little hearts are pretty cute. I think I would've, mm, I like it, but I, I think I'm a bigger fan of the silver. I need to go brad shopping or even plain. I think black brads or black adhesive enamel dots would look cool. Those might be easier than brads anyway, but you get the point. Super cute, I'm loving it. So when you're ready to fold up your card, I will do that with you, but let's take a look at the envelope. It comes off your mat like this. I went ahead and folded its score lines, and you just want to put some glue on the bottom. And fold that up. And then when you're ready to insert your card, you can bend this hood up a little bit, push the seats down as you kind of carefully close it up. Just like this. And just carefully put that inside and close it up and affix it and boom. Finally for the rainbow box card, I have my shapes here. I've got my clouds. I have some of my panels here. Um, these specifically are panels one. Um, this this one here, this is the back side of the card. I went ahead and stamped on the label with this cute stamp set by Mama Elephant called Congrats All Around. And then the border of it is from panels three. It also has these two pieces. And then panels two is just one panel. And I went ahead and glued that on the flap here of my card base, which I went ahead and folded just like this. Then the other shapes that are part of the card are the inserts, and your machine will have cut a number into each one, which I darkened in with a pencil just for this video so that it's easier to see. And I also went ahead and glued my colors on, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple here. So if you take a look at the PDF menu document that comes with your download, it shows the inserts the front side, the back and the side, and then the inserts in the inside of the back with the purple. So I did go ahead and glue these on. I glued that on already, these guys. So I just realized it looks like there's a border around the clouds. I guess I forgot to remove the stroke line of those shapes for the PDF. There is no border around those clouds. They're just like that, that's it. So if you want to go ahead and get yours set up like that, you can. I'm going to go ahead and finish gluing these panels on, just like this. So this just goes right in the center. You can certainly use any color paper. I thought the orangish yellow 
for the card itself was really cheerful. But then for these panels, I really liked the look of the blue, various blues. Not only to have fun using this really cute paper, but also because it kind of looks like the sky a little bit, I think. But I don't think you can go wrong with a rainbow card. Whatever colors you want to use are probably going to look really cool. It would be really cute if this was all kind of like pastel. It could be like a baby, baby shower card. It would be cute. So you can see that kind of creates just a cute little, kind of like a patchwork look. So I will go ahead and glue this here. So basically what we're going to do is just glue these in order, starting with the back, starting with number five. And I'm going to glue it right on the side so that the this little corner is flush with the top of the box and so that this back edge is flush with this corner here. Jeez, my finger is really like, it's a little uh, tore up because I've been doing quite a bit of weeding. The weeding never ends. Isn't that the truth if you have... Uh, any dirt in your name, you know what I'm talking about. So, there we go, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and stack them all up. I mean, I have been wearing gardening gloves, but just all the friction of pulling so many weeds, it's crazy. But it's nice, it's a nice way to get outside, I guess. That's how I look at it. Plus you can never be bored. If there are weeds to pull, you can never say that you don't know what to do with yourself because you can always go pull some weeds. I guess that's how I have to look at it. <laughs> Otherwise, I just don't know. It's one of those chores. I, for me, like once I get started, I'm like, oh, it's kind of fun. It looks so much better afterwards. But man, you turn around a week later and there's more. So as you can see, I'm just stacking these up, making sure that the back lines up, it's nice and perpendicular, or parallel rather, and that the top is flush there. So next I'm going to take all of these tabs and fold them the other way. And then glue them the same way where they're flush at the top and in the back. It's just a little tricky since they are so narrow. If you have a some kind of a crafting tool or something skinny you can stick in there to help you press it down. By all means go for it. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the other inserts tabs. So 
You could also align it and then gently close it to press it down. One more. And then we can close it up with this final out outer tab. Just like so. Next we can put our clouds on. If you wanted to add some ink you could if you have some ink that you like. Not necessary but if you did want to you could just dab some around the edges. Looks really cute, colorful, kind of dreamy on these clouds and adds a nice little finishing edge. You could glue them right onto the front if you want, or you could use a dimensional adhesive, which I think I'm going to do. I've got these Zots by Thermal Web. They are sticky dimensional dots. I like using them quite a bit because, like I always say, you can't really go wrong with dimension. And if you need them to be smaller, you can usually get away with tearing them in half. So, I don't think it really matters which way these are going, but I'm going to put them on the way that I did before, like this. So that it looks like it's kind of ending there in the clouds. More or less symmetrical, ideally. And there you have it. So next, for the envelope, it comes off of your mat like this. I went ahead and folded the edges, and then all you have to do, hi Winnie, is put some glue on the bottom parts like this, fold it up, make sure you're not gluing it completely closed. Oh hi, I missed you. You were napping. And then you can carefully fold your card closed and put it inside. And then you can affix the top closed. So there you have it, five brand new box cards. I hope you have a great time making them. If you do, I would love to see a picture on Facebook, Instagram, your blog, Pinterest, however is easiest for you to share. 
it would be awesome to see and it's always really fun for me to see and it's always great when everyone else gets a chance to check out your project as well so thanks for sharing and um, thanks for watching and I will catch you next time happy crafting <laughs>